Hi! In this tutorial, I'm going to walk through how to find nuclear to cytoplasmic intensity ratios in cell profiler, and I'm going to talk about two different ways that we can do that, and why we might want to do it one way or another, and the sort of advantages of doing it, uh, doing it one way or another. So specifically, that's using the whole cytoplasm region to take the ratio, or using just the paranuclear ring region. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm in Cell Profiler here. I've got some images loaded up. Um, I've gone through the metadata. I've gone through the names and types. And the first thing I'm going to do is identify the primary objects. So I'm going to use that um, based on a DNA stain. So let's just step through. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with my segmentation here. So good. So now I'm going to identify my secondary objects, and in this case I'm going to be looking at a nuclear translocation of a protein, a transcriptional regulator called YAP. Uh, so YAP is, we know that it's regulated by, uh, largely by nuclear to cytoplasmic translocation. And if we look at the YAP image, we can see that in some of the cells, YAP is more localized to the nucleus than the cytoplasm, and in some cells it's more uh, localized in the cytoplasm and the nuclear signal is lower. Okay, so our secondary objects, I'm going to just use the YAP uh, stain here because it's a nice uh, diffuse cytoplasmic signal. It's giving the algorithm what it wants in terms of being kind of um, apart from the nucleus uh, brighter towards the center of the cell and then smoothly tapering off towards the edges of the cell. But of course, your uh, transcription factor or your protein of interest might not be um, so convenient, so you might want to use a, a, a different marker for identifying the cell. So let's just step through. And again, I'm pretty happy with the segmentation here. Uh, I've already worked this out beforehand. So we can see that, yep, yeah, segmenting pretty cleanly. Uh, there are a few places where, yeah, this is not exactly correct. Um, the algorithm hasn't hasn't quite got where this cell ends and this cell begins, and also um, here. So that's something that it we maybe we could improve it a bit uh, with some more tweaking of the algorithm. Um, but when cells are uh, close to each other like this, when they're butting right up against one another, it might be the scenario where you can't really tell, and maybe you, the user, can't even really tell uh, where one cell ends and another cell begins. So, all right, so let's step through. So we've got the cells uh, now and we've got the nuclei, but we want to get the region that's only the cytoplasm. So here we're going to use a tertiary objects uh, function. Um, and here it's basically, we're going to take two stencils, so the cell stencil and the nucleus stencil, and we're going to just subtract the nucleus stencil from the cell stencil. So let's step through. And yet, here we go. Nuclei, whole cells, and just the cytoplasm. So now we've got three stencils associated with every object, um, every cell, and now we can um, make lots of measurements on them. But I don't want to stop here. I want one more region, and that is the paranuclear ring region. So why might we want to find the paranuclear ring region? So it could be the case that um, your segmentation is not perfect, as we've seen for some of these cells, and there's some overlap or there's some missegmentation. One cell has been kind of classed in in the, the boundary of another cell, and it's not exactly it's not exactly accurate. Um, we can also see that there are differences in intensity in some cells which are probably due more to um, physical considerations than necessarily to concentration of molecules in that region. So when cells are all uh, nicely sort of columnar epithelia and they're all exactly the same height right up against each other, then the thickness of the cells is going to be pretty uniform um, across the whole, uh, the whole width, the whole, the whole range of the cell. And that width is going to be consistent between the region where the nucleus is sitting and the region where the cytoplasm is sitting. Now, if we have cells which are more shaped like a sombrero, then the part where the nucleus is going to be a lot fatter than the parts out towards the edge of the cell. So 
you can really see this in this in this very large cell here. If we were to look at this cell um, in, a, in a side view, if we were to draw a line through the cell like this, we would see it looking like uh, a mountain peak. So there'd be um, a, a very tall region here where the nucleus is, and then two hillsides sloping down to some flatter regions. So this can cause us some uh, some issues from an imaging perspective. Um, if we have focused our microscope on the nucleus, then that's fine. We're going to be getting a nice slice like right through the center of the nucleus for, for this cell and probably for these cells also. But what's going to happen when uh, at, the, at those sort of those bottom regions of our hillside, the focal plane is going to be here, but the, the thin parts of the cell are going to be down here. It's so not necessarily in the focal plane. Um, we also know that a region which is thicker uh, is just going to have more molecules in it. So even if it is in focus, so that focal plane, you know, it's not infinitely thin. It's going to be, you know, anywhere from 0.5 microns or to up to a few microns. And that's going to depend on your objective lens and your level of magnification, if it's confocal or epifluorescence. So um, you're, you're seeing a, a, some sort of fat in the Z dimension slice uh, through the cell of, of photons that you're gathering. So, of course, a thicker section is going to have more molecules in it than a thinner section, which is going to be partly cell and partly just the, just the medium. So it might be cleaner, depending on uh, how your cells are, to not use the entire cytoplasm region for your cytoplasmic intensity measurement, uh, because you know that that's going to skew uh, to be like an underestimate. And instead, you might want to take the cytoplasm region that's just around the nucleus. And that region is going to be much more close to being a, a similarly thick section of your cell and in the same focal plane as your nucleus. I have often found, um, especially with uh, cells which have this, this sort of hat shape, uh, that this leads to a lot cleaner data. So let's see how we can define this paranuclear ring region in cell profiler. So it's a few steps. Um, we're gonna, first we're gonna do uh, two uh, expand or shrink objects. So two dilation steps. And the first dilation step, we're gonna start at the nucleus and we're gonna define the inside of the ring. And the second step, we're going to dilate, again, starting from the nucleus and define the outside of the ring. So we could just start exactly at the nucleus and have that be the, in, the, inner, the inner portion of that donut. Um, I like to step it out a pixel or two uh, because there's always some uncertainty about you know, where exactly the edge of the nucleus is. So I want to just move it out by like one pixel or maybe a couple of pixels. And if that's going to depend on your magnification again and the size of your objects, um, just so that I'm more confident that I'm really getting the cytoplasm rather than some um, bit of the nucleus in there. Okay, so let's see how that looks. So we've got the original nuclei and then the nuclei plus one. They are a little bit larger, it's kind of hard to see, um, but we've just made that uh, dilation of one pixel in all directions. Okay, so now we're gonna define the outer border. In this case, I'm, I want a ring region which is uh, six pixels in uh, width. So I'm going to dilate out uh, seven pixels, but of course the number of pixels is going to depend on your objects and your magnification and your pixel size. So okay. So here, yeah, we can see that that's much larger and that's the outside of our ring region. But now we need to do another tertiary object um, identification and subtract the, the, um, the inner circle from the outer circle to leave just that donut. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. The larger objects are our plus sevens, the smaller are our plus ones. And I'm going to give that a name of just ring. Step through. And there we go. So like the cytoplasm uh, tertiary objects, now we have uh, nucleus plus seven minus nucleus plus one gives us this ring around the nuclei. But we're not done yet. So we've just done a dilation, but we've not made any restrictions on that dilation. So that dilation could have occurred out past the border of the cells. 
So now we need to do a mask, mask objects. And here we want to keep only the part of the paranuclear ring that is inside uh, the cell stencil. So the objects to be masked in this case are the cells and the masking object is the ring. I find this nomenclature to be non-intuitive uh, personally, but this is what works um, for, for this operation. Uh, there are other ways, there are other things that you can do with a uh, mask. So you can, in this case, we're going to keep the overlapping region, um, but you could also remove uh, a region. You could remove depending on the overlap. Um, you can invert the mask. And another thing you can do is to retain the um, object numbering or renumber. So here we're going to retain because we are, we want the object number of these of these paranuclear rings to be the same as the nucleus that they're associated with. So we want to retain that numbering. Um, you could do a mask maybe if you're looking for subcellular objects or you're looking for, I don't know, um, bacteria or mycoplasma that have invaded your cells and you want to, now you want to um, find mycoplasma spots that are inside the cells uh, but not outside the cells and but now you want to renumber them and have them be their own objects. So these are all sorts of things that you can do. In this case, uh, the key is we want to keep the overlapping region and retain the uh, numbering. Okay, so here we go. So we've got the mask, uh, the masked objects, and we've got the masking stencil. And if we zoom in, we can see that, yeah, indeed, uh, this dilation did go outside of the border of the cell, but now thanks to this mask, um, we're only keeping the part of the perinuclear ring that's uh, within the cells. So we're cutting off a little bit. And of course, if you had a larger ring region, you'd be cutting off more. And this is really important because when we, when we measure the mean intensity, we don't want to be getting some of this empty background in here because of course that's going to throw our measurements off uh, potentially quite substantially. So I really like this overlay outlines uh, tool in Cell Profiler. I think it's a really nice uh, way of kind of sanity checking and quality controlling my pipeline as I go through and build it. Of course, you can untick this box when you actually run your pipeline, but um, it's quite helpful, especially if you're changing things or working with a new data set um, and you want to just see, okay, am I really doing what I think I'm doing? Um, so we can overlay outlines of the paranuclear region onto the yap stain and just have a look and double check that things are looking as they should. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, I'm happy with that. Uh, the paranuclear ring, it really is overlapping the stained region and not the background region. Okay, so now I need to measure some object intensities. So here I'm going to select the yap image and I'm going to measure uh, the various uh, regions or stencils of my cells. So the nucleus, the whole cell, the cytoplasm, and the perinuclear ring. I'm going to untick the eye and just let that run. And now I'm going to do some more kind of quality control, sanity check, data exploration using this display data on image function. And so here I'm going to, I, I want to see what my intensity measurements are. And particularly, I want to compare them uh, between the cytoplasm and just the paranuclear ring region. So here I can choose that I want to measure some objects and I want to measure the cytoplasm region, the intensity, the mean intensity in the YAP channel. And I'd like to display that on the YAP image. So stepping through. Uh, okay, and actually you can see here that these numbers are all very low um, and I can't see a huge amount of distinction between them. Now, why is that? So, you know that Cell Profiler rescales your images uh, from 0 to 1. So, the raw images here are 16-bit, um, but the signal, because these were taken uh, on a confocal, it's not using anywhere near the full range of that um, 65,000, however many um, shades of gray that are available in a 16-bit image. So if I mouse over, I mean, I can see that the background is almost zero, but 
even the bright looking regions of the cell, because of course the computer is, is you know, the, the software is scaling this so that my eyes can see it um, using like the min and max. The intensity here is only in this bright region 0 0.04. So I'm not getting a whole lot out of like just looking at the two decimal places here. Um, so there are a couple of things that I can do differently. Um, I can add a a, a rescale image step um, and just ramp everything up uh, and rescale it. And that way I can see um, a, a more range of values. Or I could um, do a multiplication step and say, you know, I just like multiply multiply everything by like 10,000 and give me give me some numbers that are not, you know, uh, to 10 decimal places, uh, tiny little numbers. I could also ask it to give me uh, more decimal places. And now I can see some more uh, distinctions um, between uh, what I'm looking at here. So this cytoplasmic region is 0 0.01251. This is 0 0.01139. Uh, these are brighter, so this is you know in the 0 0.02s. And again, these numbers, these numbers are all relative to one another. These are these are the rescaled values of a 16-bit uh, grayscale image. And if you looked at the histogram of pixel distribu intensity distribution of that image, that's, they're going to be clustered way down here. So, you know, numbers in the maybe hundreds and thousands rather than in the tens of thousands. Okay, but it's, you know, these, these numbers are kind of making sense. Things that look brighter are brighter. Um, things that look dimmer are dimmer. And I can do the same thing. Let me get five decimal places here on the ring region. And if we look at some of these side by side, uh, we can see that for this for this big cell, the whole the the average intensity across the whole cytoplasm is let's just take some decimal places off and call this twelve. Uh, and here, if we're looking at just the region around the nucleus, taking some decimal places off, we'll call it sixteen. Uh, whereas something like uh, this cell, which uh, these cells here, which are more uh, consistent across their their whole cytoplasm. So this one is uh, 17 and this one is 16 or this is one, 179 and uh, 166. So those are a lot closer together. So you can see that when you if you're just using the cytoplasm measurement, you do run the risk of kind of skewing. And again, it's going to depend on what your cells look like, what your data looks like, which one you want to use. But I have just always found that actually using the ring region uh, gives me more consistent and, and cleaner data. Okay, so now we need to calculate some math. So here we're going to calculate the nuclear uh, intensity by cytoplasmic intensity or nuclear intensity divided by the ring intensity. Um, of the app uh, staining. But there's something important that we want to do here. Oops, that should be defined. Uh, there's something that's important that we want to do here, and we want to use uh, the log ratio rather than the actual ratio. So why do we want to use the log? OK, so if you have exactly the same number of molecules in the nucleus as in the cytoplasm or the paranuclear region, then that ratio is going to be 1 to 1. Fine. If you've got twice as many molecules in the nucleus, so say you've got now you've got two, and in the cytoplasm you've got one. So that ratio is going to be two to one, and that's value of two. Well, what about the opposite? So say now you have uh, twice as many in the cytoplasm than in the nucleus, so that ratio is going to be one over two point five. Okay, so those are equivalent to one another, right? You've three total molecules. Two of them are here. One of them is here or two of them are here, one of them is here. Uh, but the difference between one and two, obviously, is one. And the difference between one and 0.5 is 0.5. And then let's double that. So, so going further, uh, four to one ratio, four in the nucleus, one in the cytoplasm. Obviously, that number is four. What's the converse of that, uh, or the inverse? In fact, the inverse of that. Uh, the inverse of that is one to four. OK, fine, that's 0.25. 
So the difference between 1 and 4 is 3, and the difference between 1 and 0.25 is 0.75. So you can see the problem here if we want to do operations on these ratio numbers, like find the standard deviation or find the mean, right? It's always going to skew um, towards the, the larger numerator. And it means that we're going to, if we find uh, means, we're always going to be underestimating um, the, uh, the, the differences, uh, the, the magnitude of the difference when the um, denominator gets larger. But we can fix this if we use exponents. So we can take the log, uh, the, the log 10 here. Um, you could also, you could use the natural log. That's fine. The key thing is that you want to use an exponent. So, okay, so what is, what is one? One to the, one to the zero. So uh, that's just zero. So if we've got the same signal in the nucleus as in the cytoplasm, that's going to give us a, uh, a log, log one, right, is zero. If you've got twice as much in the nucleus um, as in the cytoplasm, this is going to be a larger numerator and a smaller denominator. And that's going to, and the log of that is going to be now a positive number. And if you got it the other way around, a larger denominator, then the log of that is going to be now a negative number. But the important thing is that we've now we've re we've <laughs> essentially rescaled um, the the distance between the the magnitude of change. Right, we've got on one side um, as things go up in the numerator, then we've got numbers increasing from one to infinity, and the increments get larger and larger and larger and larger and larger, as the denominator gets larger then we've got um, an infinite number of fractions between one and zero. Uh, but the increments between those, those numbers, the, the magnitude of change gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, if we take the exponents, what we've done is we've, we've rescaled that. And now the increments going from zero to infinity and zero to negative infinity, apologize, apologize to mathematicians out there, but this is the way I think of it. Um, those increments, those changes in magnitude are now balanced on either side of that zero point. And that means that we can do things like add and subtract them, find their averages, find standard deviations. Um, if you don't believe me, draw it out. Okay, so what are we going to do here? So we've got the numerator objects, uh, intensity, mean intensity in the app channel. Okay, we don't need to do anything uh, multiplying or um, raising powers, and then our denominator, again, cytoplasm intensity, mean intensity, yep. And now we have the option here, do we want to take the log? So we can say yes, we do want to take the log, thank you. All right, let's step through that. Great, so we've got an average of 0.16, and oops, this should also be divide. And here we're doing the same thing again, but we're using the paranuclear region. And let's step through. Hmm, and we've got 0.11. So you can see that actually there really is um, a bit of a difference and that using the cytoplasm intensity uh, versus the perinuclear intensity does tend to uh, give you a higher number because of the, the reasons that we discussed before. Okay, so we can also see what that looks like again on our images. And here we've got, uh, we can look at the nuclei, and now we've got this uh, math section. And we can look actually at the image. And then we can step through and look at that for the paranuclear region as well. And again, here we can see in the um, nucleus by whole cytoplasm region, we get a 0.42 for this large cell. And for the uh, nucleus by paranucleus, uh, we get 0.3. So there is a bit of a difference there um, between uh, some cells. Other cells, the difference will not be as, as great. Um, and that just depends on whether the paranuclear region and the whole cytoplasm region are more similar to one another. So um, in this case, it's the difference between 0.32 and 0.33, so not very much of a difference at all. Um, and some of these ones in here, you know, have more or less of a difference. So we can also see uh, that this is what we expect. So something with an obviously 
a brighter nucleus than the surrounding has a positive number. And these guys here where the cytoplasm is brighter than the nucleus have got a negative number. And that is how we find nuclear to cytoplasmic or nuclear to paranuclear ratios in cell profiler.